Um, my name is Manuela Aguirre. I'm a PhD fellow at the Oslo School of Architecture and Design. And I am happy to present this project with uh, the Phipps Space Fellows. This is last night, us planning our presentation. Think of mapping, timeline mapping our, our uh, slides together. And I will let Sarah show them. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah Schulman, and I am the founding partner of In With Forward. And we are a whole collection um, of different folks uh, here today um, from three different service delivery agencies in uh, British Columbia, uh, as well as Manuela and myself. And we have all been working together for the past year to try and uh, develop a different approach to systems change, really starting from the ground up, working with folks who have a cognitive disability and all of the staff and system stakeholders around that uh, to really um, develop a new kind of research and development methodology internal to the sector. Uh, and what brings us all together is a really big ambition, which is how can we start to transition our social safety nets from uh, being a kind of source of protection from harm into really functioning as these trampolines which enable people to flourish. And so, you know, historically our welfare systems were designed to ensure uh, that people had a roof over their head uh, and something to eat and basic medical care and they've done a good job of doing those basic things but inadvertently they have often gotten in the way of people leading really thriving lives. And so that's our purpose is how can we embed ourselves within social sector organizations in order to make that transition happen. Now we've got a big ambition, but we've also got a string of failures. And so really our history over the past 10 years, um, as in with Forward, we've moved to five different you know, countries uh, and uh, there's not much that lasts. So we've done great projects, million dollar projects, brought all the stakeholders in the room, prototyped alternative service systems, and really the only service system that you will find still around is in Australia, started in Adelaide, family by family. It's a network of families, healthy families. We move social workers out of the way and uh, we now have hundreds of families all over Australia who are interfacing with this new service, family by family, all developed with families from the ground up. <laughs> Sounds really great, uh, but actually it's a story uh, of limits as well, of where we didn't get to systems change. So uh, Family by Family is its own social enterprise operating on the periphery of the existing system. Uh, we've managed to pull lots of resources from the system to support Family by Family, but actually most of the social workers in the system, 99.9% .9 of them do the exact same job now that they did five years ago. And so if you are 99.9% .9 of families who are engaging with the child protection system in Australia, you will still have the dominant service experience and it's a lucky few uh, that might get to interface with uh, a new kind of service or program on the margins. And so it was that frustration of how do we actually transition resources inside the system, not just peripherally trying to innovate, uh, that led us to uh, Vancouver uh, and to a range uh, of uh, service providers that were willing and able to make a pretty big commitment to transforming from the inside out. Uh, and we definitely uh, agree in it. The quote that Anne mentioned yesterday resonates with us. What's the smallest increment of change that might tip things over? And that's what we've been prototyping over the past year. So it all started uh, about 18 months ago when six of us moved into apartment 303 in a social housing complex in Burnaby, British Columbia. Uh, and we do immersive ethnographic field work. So we actually live alongside our users for months at a time. Uh, and we do that in order to really understand the rhythms of daily life and try and figure out what's the range of things they're interacting with. So we don't go in sort of thinking that it's one particular service we need to change or shift, but actually what's the full range of interactions that people there are engaging with. And uh, the starter project, as we called it, this three months of living in a housing complex, wasn't just an opportunity for us to do field work and to reframe the problem from the perspective of folks that live there but it was really an opportunity for us to test the partnership. Because what we've learned over the past decade of doing this is that to get to you know, incremental and radical change requires some incredible leadership from folks within the system. And so we were testing really whether the chief executives of the three agencies that we work with, the Burnaby Association for Community Inclusion, Simon Fraser Society for Community Living and Possibilities had the gumption and the stamina to do this with us. And they did. Um, and um, out of that uh, came some core insights that's led us to prototyping a whole range of things. 
Uh, and so this is Jamie on the team. You'll hear from her later. She's a secondee from Possibilities. So half of our team is made up of secondees from the service system. And we spent many weeks getting to know Mark. Mark uh, is an individual who uh, is labeled with a cognitive disability. He's been going to the same set of services for over 20 years. And when we met him, uh, one of his first quotes to us is, I'm really tired of making the same spaghetti dish. For 20 years, I've gone to the same day program every day, and I've learned to make the same spaghetti. And so um, I would really like uh, to learn how to make a roast. Uh, and as we started to meet um, Mark and see all of the services around him, we began to see that the same themes that resonated with Mark, the lack of novelty in his life, the lack of learning and opportunities for growth and development over 20 years, were the exact same themes that the service deliverers around him faced. So we started to shadow his workers as well and see the world from their perspective. And his workers felt equally stuck and bored. Um, they were tired of going and making spaghetti every day or going to the bowling alley every day and didn't really have a pipeline of new ideas to work with. Uh, and then we sort of went the layer up and we started shadowing the supervisors of the frontline workers and trying to understand the world from their perspective. Um, and they, too, were pretty bored. They were tired of fighting fires all day and really just dealing with staffing issues. So they weren't even getting to see practice on the ground um, or do any of the kind of quality assurance that was in their job titles. They were pre predominantly on the phone trying to figure out scheduling of all these frontline workers. Uh, and then we started to shadow some of the policymakers as well and start to spend time with the funders of these organizations. And they had in their job descriptions the desire to do innovation. They were charged with making an innovation framework, but they also lacked reference points. And so when you ask them to point to good examples of innovative practice, they were a bit at a loss as well. And so the kind of the whole system uh, was needing new input, new ideas, um, a new way to act on things. At the same time as we started spending time with Mark and everybody in the service system, we started to recognize that there's all these people that aren't in the service system, all these informal actors that are also surrounding people like Mark. Uh, and so we got to meet neighbors of Mark, people, uh, refugees from Afghanistan who had so much passion and so much you know, know-how and talent that just wasn't being capitalized on anywhere. Uh, and we started to meet small business owners right in the block around us, a small um, uh, pet store and uh, folks around that that had, again, you know, lots of passion and energy but wasn't being tapped into. And of course there were schools and cities and community centers and all of this other resource that was really disconnected from Mark's life. And so our goal um, after the end of this starter project was to prototype two things. One, something called the fifth space, which is a new space for everybody within the service system to do research and development and prototype new kinds of interactions within the service system. And Kudos, which is a new platform for adult learning, a way to activate all of this untapped resource in the community and find a way to make it work for somebody like Mark. So this is Kudos, um, and uh, Kudos is a live prototype. We're just transitioning now into trying to, to grow it. Um, and so the kind of you know concept is pretty simple. It's an exchange for adult learning, so people like Mark can log on. Um, and these are live, one-to-one, -one, in-person experiences offered by small business owners, students, retirees. You can go tap dancing, you can learn French, you can learn how to bake at the local bakery, you can repair bicycles. Um, there's you know, literally hundreds of experiences, and the idea is to get Mark out of services, interacting in the community, uh, and uh, reflecting on what he's learning and doing. And so to make kudos, uh, we've had to prototype a whole range of stuff. And our team is a mix of social scientists and interaction designers and service designers and graphic designers. We make value propositions. We've had to find a way to recruit all of these people in the community that have a passion to share. We've had to create a range of tools, an app, an actual platform to connect people. Uh, we've had to create a ton of new roles within the system. How do we help spark reflection and learning and not just create new activities? And so we've put a real focus um, on that. And then what actually happens when somebody like Mark uh, goes on an experience? This is an experience behind the scenes at a local theater. How do we actually coach the folks providing experiences, the hosts, to make that into a really great learning moment for two people? So I will transition from how the team went from Kudos, which was a service offering developed by Inwood Forward in a more external way to how do we develop the capacity 
for the organization itself to develop new service offerings and also have the capacity to think critically what's working and what's not working and for who. So that's that's the foundation for the food space. And I'll just show you a quick. Basically, the mechanics of the food space is that selected employees from three social service organizations that deliver services for people with cognitive disabilities get 50% of their time, that's why it's called the food space, um, to participate in, in or take the space within their daily life to research a problem that they're passionate about and develop new services. So it went from being 29 people to 27 and had two dropouts in a way in the six months. It started in end of January this year. Um, we had seven teams and six projects. Two projects are now moving forward. One project has their team with 40% of the time. And all the interactions in the fit space were prototyped. So when we think about implementation from the start and testing and tweaking interactions to really know what works and what doesn't, that's what the fit space was all about. And we, since we are all about systems change, we have some really early indicators of what has changed in this past six months. So we started to create change at the individual level. So from the prototypes of the ideas that the teams have come up, there's two of new functions catalyzed with the project in tandem. Um, there's five small businesses offering new jobs. 12 hacks identified. Right now, this is like foreign language. But these are all related to the projects that they, they made, and they prototype with these people on great interventions at the organizational level. So now that we're creating a network of people going through this program and, 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 and feeling hopeful for, for change to happen, they become their own peer-to-peer -peer support network. And they start involving others. And in With Forward, we'll soon have a, a three-day residency by policymakers also joining space. So that's also a direct access to other types of relationships that can move things faster. So you can see, like, for example, Haley, she's a frontline worker, a new frontline worker, that now just knocks on the door of the chief executive just to get feedback on her project. So those are just great indicators. The ripple effect among people that have participated in this space are involving their colleagues. So here we have Garrett trying to run a session, a more collaborative session among his peers to design an event. But on the flip side of this, we're moving quickly and numbly, but we have left people out and that's creating some resistance. So those are things that we have to be mindful when intervening. And the CEOs of these three, these three organizations are incredibly motivated. They're managing to mobilize resources in a two week time period, which that is almost unrealistic. And now we want to, we have the Fifth Space Fellows here, so we want to hear from them and their experience. So I will start with Jane. Hi, I'm Jamie. Um, I was one of the first secondees, so started with In With Forward uh, in April 2014, moving into the Burnaby Complex with them. Um, and so post-starter, we really talked about how are we able to kind of spread the word of what we're doing and also bring people in. And so in November, uh, we started out with a bit of an outreach kind of program. And we roved around across the three agencies for six weeks um, in an RV in order to recruit people for uh, kudos and for the fifth space. And really wanted to make the distinction that this was a new role, a, a new type of a way of working. And so uh, fellows that received um, entrance into the fifth space received these boxes and included in the boxes were uh, a new role description, um, a space guide uh, to kind of give them a, a flavor of what was going to come over the next six months. And here we'll see a little ethnography about Wendy here. Uh, an ethnography, as far as I can tell so far, is uh, going to meet uh, with people or a group of people and finding out as much as you can about them just by sharing, sharing their space and sharing their experience. It, definitely went a little more discussion focused than just purely observing. But um, I, I definitely felt like seeing her home, like her home is certainly a reflection of who she is. Hi, I'm, I'm Wendy Moore and I'm a frontline worker. 
I have worked in the field on and off probably for 30 years. I've gone to a lot of conferences, I've had a lot of training, I've come back and it's never really translated into my day-to-day -day work. This felt really different when I, when I saw the invitations and the posters at work, I thought, I'm going to jump in, um, and so I did. And what felt really different for me was that it um, was non-hierarchical. Everyone got to contribute. It was a space that felt um, really open and welcome, and we were you know, able to share ideas and, and try things on. And um, it challenged me every day. I, and I have to be honest, I'm really not computer savvy, and it, it took everything that I had every day to go there and produce things and we got to really see things happen in, in real time and try them and try them on and that was something that um, was very different and I'm hoping and I you know it sort of becomes a mindset that you take with you all the time so that you're always looking at tweaking and doing things differently and um, I've really been lucky to be here uh, involved. Been lucky to have you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Krista, and I'm the Shared Living Coordinator with Simon Fraser Society. I've been working in the field for about six years now. Um, this picture that you're seeing up here is one of the very first iterations that we had done for our prompting materials in getting folks with disabilities to talk about things that they wanted to do. So here you can see pictures of different activities. We also did pictures of different food items to get people to pick meals that they started wanting to make um, and to pick activities that they wanted to do that wasn't generally offered to them. Our main focus was individuals living in group homes, so that's what we were trying to get. There was actually four iterations of all of our prompting tools. We did a lot of failing, a lot of revising, um, which I think was very helpful, just being able to have that safe space to fail and be okay with that. Hi, uh, my name is Will Kim, and I'm a residential care worker at Possibilities. Been working in the field for five years, but then I kind of stumbled into it because I actually majored in animation art and design. And what I was trained for had nothing to do with what I had to work with. Um, so coming into the fifth space, it really challenged me to utilize all of my other skills that I was actually academically trained for. And um, they, they they guided us through little booklets you see over there um, every week, um, giving us prompts to like design things to work with. So it started, uh, they challenged us to first do ethnographies with the team members, and then we went out and did nine ethnographies using um, comic books that I did and the visual cards that my friend, um, my colleague, drafted up. And then we found out a universal pain from nine, all nine of the ethnographies that people living in the disability sector had difficult time uh, were very, very frustrated that they didn't have anybody to talk to about sexuality and relationship. Um, we also did some ethnographies on staff and collected four stories and also heard the same frustration that they didn't they feel comfortable about talking about sex and sexuality. Um, so from there, uh, we were asked to prototype. So it's like now you have this unified message of the like pain points. There's this demand. So how are you going to turn this concept into development. We were asked to um, do the design uh, using Legos to see how we're going to do more field work. And then we actually were asked to pull our personal resources. Um, my colleague Haley, in a couple slides ago, she's actually an actress, so she, and John, another colleague, he works with the theater people. So they pulled um, Daniel Chai and uh, James from um, our one of our day program, and. Uh, uh, Adam over there uh, from Actor Community and three guys were uh, asked to come into a studio one day and then we just gave them questions so they or they had to answer all these really personal questions <laughs> on camera and pretending that they're best friends. So uh, and then we went and showed that to people and the responses that we got from people were amazing. Um, there were guys who said well, you know what, that looks too scripted. Men just don't talk about stuff like that. But they actually were um, in the room talking about it, their own experiences for an hour and a half after <laughs> the clip was over. Um, I'm Lisa Joy, and I'm a manager with one of the service agencies. But right now, I'm a secondee to Aim It Forward as an interaction designer. And uh, with the other fellows, we all 
uh, started to kind of narrow in after working on our pain points for a while and um, came up with sort of uh, six final project ideas. I was involved in the project called In Tandem, which is a matching platform. We've got a little video here to share our prototyping experience. One of the quotes that came out of our ethnographic research was, I'd rather do something I don't like, someone I like, than something that I like to do with someone I don't like. The way the project's set up is between three eight different agencies. And what's happening in the past is probably that each association is kind of like their own little island. What we're doing is we're running a, a prototype of a speed friending. What we're looking for is how did this interaction work for people and from from that point, what we're going to do is gather some of the information that we got and look at the next step. And start! Hi, how are you? Good. What do you like to do for fun? For fun? Stop ball. that we want to improve upon next time are um, some of the props we use. We think the score pad can be easier to use. We think that the tables can be laid out in a way that will uh, facilitate conversation better. We think we can have some better prompts for the conversations and we, um, we want to try different facilitation styles. Um, so where are we now? We are trying to scale um, the concept of the fifth space, um, both embedding it within the agencies. How do we create a permanent social research and development space? So not a six-month program, but this is just the way in which um, social service agencies do business. Um, and how do we provide the backbone infrastructure for that? So that's kind of the role of In With Forward, is providing curation and coaching in the curriculum to support these partnerships and create um, these kinds of permanent spaces. And we really believe that partnership is the key to scaling this. And so rather than adding more and more organizations to one of this, how do we kind of keep it at the right small scale and scale the small scaled version? Um, so we think three agencies, is there's something really magical about that size and the ability to work between them. Um, and we really hope that the uh, fit space becomes a kind of exemplifier of practice, a, a best practice center that people can come do residencies and training and teaching through. Um, so yeah, what to remember. So if you have to take out three things from this presentation, we're trying to prototype change for people at all levels of the social system. How we're working from the ground up to model new practice, do like prototyping, and measure what works, what doesn't, and why, and for whom. And why? Because there's too many top-down change-making approaches to have a huge disconnect between what is designed and what is actually implemented. So back to the previous conversation. Um, so we're working backwards. We're starting with people to really testing interactions with them, see what works, and then designing services rather than from policy to program and then touching the lives of people. So I think that's it. We're fucking the system by prototyping. <laughs> and yes, there's more things on the website. <laughs>